What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going through the best Pokemon to power up in 2022. Let's hop right into it, time stamp flow as always. So quickly let me explain how this video is gonna work. First we're gonna talk about the best Pokemon to power up to use in raids as raid attackers, and then we're gonna talk about the best Pokemon to power up for PvP. When we're talking about the best Pokemon to power up for raids, we're gonna talk about three things. We're gonna go through each type, but before we talk about each type, we're gonna talk about how good that type is actually for raids. Is it even worth powering up Pokemon of that type? And does that type actually have use? Then we're gonna go through the best Pokemon of that type to power up, the best, the strongest Pokemon. And then finally, we're gonna go through the best possible raid attacking team you could have for that type. And we're gonna talk about teams with one Mega and teams without a Mega. Let's hop into it. So I'm gonna link below the website we're using today, but it's the classic comprehensive DPS spreadsheet on GamePress. First of all, for anyone who wants to figure out how to do this themselves, it's gonna be very easy. All you have to do is search at, asterisk and then a typing. For example, let's start with the bug type. Today we're gonna to be categorizing the best Pokemon by DPS. If you don't know, DPS stands for damage per second, which shows how much damage a Pokemon does every second. There are two other ways to categorize these Pokemon that we're not gonna be categorizing by today. Second is going to be TDO. TDO stands for total damage output. This is how much a Pokemon does in its lifetime. Certain Pokemon have high DPS, which means they do a lot of damage quick, but they're really, really frail, meaning they have a low TDO and that's the drawback of that Pokemon. Finally, DPS to the power of three, times TDO. It's some sort of formula here that takes into consideration DPS and TDO and gives the Pokemon an overall rank. Today we're going to be ranking Pokemon by DPS because if you're looking for the best of the best, DPS is really the thing that matters most because the more damage you put out every second, the faster the raid goes down. There are arguments on why to categorize Pokemon by DPS times TDO, but today we're just going to talk about DPS. If you want to figure out the best Pokemon by DPS times TDO, you can come do this for yourself. Also feel free to click the best icon here, which will only show you the best instance for each Pokemon. Okay, first type is going to be bug type. Bug type is not a very good type for raids, not a lot of use. There's usually a better type to use. And in general, the Pokemon are pretty weak for bug type. But let's go through with the best DPS Pokemon are. First of all, in terms of Megas, Mega Beedrill is gonna take the number one slot right now. It's the, actually the only bug type Mega in the game. And then in terms of non-Megas, Shadow Pinsir takes the next slot, then Shadow Caesar, and then Shadow Scyther, and then Genesect with any drive. They all have the same stats. And then regular Pinsir, Escavalier, Caesar, etc., etc. In the future, Mega Heracross will outclass Mega Beedrill and Mega Pinsir and Mega Caesar will be behind Mega Beedrill in terms of DPS. By the way, the move sets, the fast move and the charge move will be on screen all the time. So if you're curious what move set you want to run with each of these Pokemon, feel free to check them out on screen. The best bug team you can use currently in game would be one Mega Beedrill and then five Shadow Pinsers. But Shadow Caesar does pretty much just as well as Shadow Pinsir. And of course, if you're not going to use a Mega, then six Shadow Pinsers. Okay, let's move on to the second type, which is going to be the Dark type. Dark does actually have some use in raids. It's very good against Psychic type and Ghost type Pokemon because it's actually resisting the moves that the, that Pokemon is throwing at them. All in all, a generally good type to use for raids. In terms of DPS right now in game, the best Mega you can use is going to be Mega Absol. It's gonna have the highest DPS. We then have Mega Houndoom in terms of Megas. In terms of non-Megas, first of all, we have Shadow Weavile in the first slot, and this one actually outclasses Mega Absol very strong. Then Shadow Honchkrow, and then Shadow Absol, which I don't believe is available right now. Then Shadow Sharpedo, Shadow Houndoom, Shadow Tyranitar, and then Darkrai, which is the first non-Shadow we're seeing here. And then Shadow Shiftry, Shadow Cacturn, Regular Weavile, Honchkrow, Yvelta. You're gonna be seeing a lot of shadows in the top DPS because shadows have a really high DPS, but usually in general, they can be pretty frail. In terms of a best team you could use right now, if you're looking for DPS, would be one Mega Absol and five Shadow Weaviles. But then if you want a bulkier team, I would go with one Mega Houndoom and then five Dark Rise. Houndoom and Dark Rise is gonna be a much bulkier team that will be doing less damage per second, but will be surviving for longer. And then of course, you could just remove the Megas if you don't wanna use a Mega. Next up, we have Dragon. Dragon is a very good type in raids. It's actually one of the strongest types that has some of the strongest raid attackers in the game. But the issue with dragon is when you're using dragon against something, you are taking super effective, usually when you're using as dragon type. In terms of DPS, best dragon type attackers we have in game right now is gonna be Shadow Salamance, which unfortunately is not available right now. But then we have Shadow Dragonite, which is actually currently available. Then we have Rayquaza, then we have regular Salamance, then we have Palkia, then we have Zekrom, then we have Dragonite, then we have Garchomp, then we have Dialga, then we have Reshiram, then we have Latios. There's a lot of good dragon type raid attackers. The only two mega dragon type raid attackers you could use right now would be a Mega Charizard X and a Mega Altaria. Now those don't really do any dragon type damage. They're super weak in terms of raid attacking. They do give dragon mega boost. So it can be worth it to run a Mega Altaria or Mega Charizard X on your team to boost up your Shadow Dragonite, your Aquazas, et cetera, et cetera. The best dragon team I would probably run would be a Mega Altaria because that will give dragon boost for a long time since it is a pretty tanky mega. And then after that, I would either run five Shadow Dragonites, but that's super expensive and not no one really has that. So five Rayquazas if you can. If not, you can mix and match 
match with like one Salamance, one Dragonite, one Zekrom, all that stuff. Finally, honorable mention to Dialga because Dialga is a part steel type, which means it's taking neutral from dragon damage. So it actually can be a decent dragon type rate attacker because it doesn't take as much dragon damage as the other dragon types like Rayquaza. Moving on to the electric type. Electric is a very useful type in raids. There's a lot of flying type legendaries that you can hit for super effective damage. And electric actually has some of the strongest raid attackers in the game in terms of DPS. First of all, in terms of megas, our best mega is going to be Mega Manectric in terms of DPS. It recently got a buff to the move Thunderfang, so it's very strong now. And then after that is going to be Mega Ampharos. Then in terms of regular raid attackers, we have Shadow Electivire in the number one slot, one of the highest DPSs in the game. Shadow Raikou after that, which unfortunately is not available right now. Shadow Zapdos as well, which is unfortunately is not available right now. But then we have Shadow Magnezone, Shadow Manectric, Thunderous in the Therian form, Zekrom, regular Electivire, Shadow Magneton, Raikou, Shadow Arcanine with an electric moveset, Zapdos, Magnezone, Luxray. All in all, Pokemon I would recommend powering up would be either the Shadow or Normal Electivire, Shadow or Normal Magnezone, Shadow or Normal Raikou, or Shadow or Normal Zapdos, as well as Thunders in the Therian form and Zekrom. Those are probably my best, most recommended power-ups. And then of course, the Mega Manectric is a good one to have as well. If you're looking for the best team, Mega Manectric and five Shadow Electivires is gonna be your best bet, but you can mix and mangle with all those Pokemon I mentioned for an Electric type team. Let's move on to Fairy type. Now I would say Fairy is a pretty useful type for raids. The good thing about Fairy is when you're using it, usually against Dragon types and Dark types, you are not taking super effective damage back, which means you're resisting the moves, which allows you to survive longer and do more damage. The issue with Fairy is they don't have these strong strongest raid attackers. The only fairy type mega I think you can use right now is going to be Mega Altaria. And Mega Altaria doesn't have the greatest fairy move set. I don't think you can learn a fairy fast move, correct me if I'm wrong. So you can use Mega Altaria if you want to give mega boost to some of these fairy types. But honestly, I would just wait till Mega Gardevoir comes out. In terms of regular raid attackers for fairy, number one is going to be Shadow Gardevoir, followed by Shadow Granbull, followed by Gardevoir, followed by Togekiss, followed by Granbull, followed by Sylveon. All those Pokemon I mentioned, so Gardevoir, Shadow or not, Granbull, Shadow or not, Togekiss, and Sylveon are going to be your go-tos for fairy type raid attackers of course, in the order that I mentioned. There is one more fairy type raid attacker we should talk about, and that's Zacian. Now, Zacian is going to rank similarly to Togekiss and Granbull and Sylveon. It's going to be outclassed by Gardevoir and Shadow Gardevoir because Zacian doesn't have a fairy fast move. Although it is doing fairy charge move damage with the move play rough, Zacian still is not the best raid attacker because it's missing out on fast move damage. So Zacian can be a worth raid attacker to power up, but it's still going to be outclassed by Shadow Gardevoir and regular Gardevoir, and it is more expensive than those Pokemon. Let's move on to the next type, which is fighting. Fighting is one of the most useful type in raids. So many Pokemon you can hit for super effective damage. And we have some very strong fighting type raid attackers in the game right now. First of all, in terms of megas, the only mega I believe in game right now is going to be Mega Lopunny. So if you don't have a Mega Lopunny, definitely one to grab. It doesn't have the most damage output, but having a mega on your team is very useful to boost those other fighting types in raids. And you're going to see there's some strong ones. In terms of DPS, the strongest in the game right now is going to be Shadow Machamp. If you don't have Shadow Machamps, get them. Unfortunately, Shadow Machop is no longer available at Grunts, but all in all, a good Pokemon. Then after that, we're going to have Lucario, followed by Shadow Hariyama, followed by by Shadow Alakazam with Counter Focus Blast. I wouldn't power that one up. That one is, I don't know why that's there. Then Conkelder, Breloom, Machamp, Shadow Glade, Blaziken. Those are all budget, but I would stick the Shadow Machamps, Lucarios, and Conkelders, and Shadow Hariyamas as your go tos. The best team you can run right now for a fighting type team is going to be a Megalopony and five Shadow Machamps. If you have that, of course, you can mix and mangle with the Lucarios, Conkelders, and Shadow Hariyamas, but that's the best team you'd go for. Fighting is definitely a team I would recommend you guys having. If you don't have a full team of fighters yet, definitely something to power up early in 2020. Let's move on to the next type, which is going to be fire type. Fire is an interesting type for raids. Honestly, I don't think it's the most worth it type to have. There's usually a better option when things are weak to fire, but still let's run through it. In terms of megas, we have one of the strongest megas in the game in the fire type category. Mega Charizard Y, one of the strongest megas you can use. Definitely a strong mega to have. If you don't have one, get one. By the way, Mega Charizard Y is better than Mega Charizard X in terms of fire type raid attack. There also is Mega Houndoom, which is a less valued mega that you can use as a fire type raid attack. So I'd stick to the Charizard, but it's still there as an in terms of fire type raid attackers that are not a mega, Shadow Moltres is going to be the number one slot. Shadow Charizard, Shadow Entei, followed by Reshiram, followed by Shadow Magmortar, followed by Darmanitan, followed by Shadow Arcanine, followed by Shadow Houndoom, followed by Shadow Blaziken, followed by Chandelure. Now, in terms of the best Pokemon you can power up for a fire type team, of course, a, a Mega Charizard Y will be your best bet. And then either Shadow Moltres or Shadow Entei, if you have those. Those are not available right now, but those are there. And then if not, Reshiram is your go to. Reshiram was just out, so hopefully, you guys have a couple Reshirams you can power up. Having a full team of Reshirams is definitely worth it. If not, you can power up regular Entei's, regular Moltres's, Darmanitan's, Chandelure's. Those are a little more budget counters, but the team I mentioned is probably the best team you can run. Let's move on to the flying type. Now, flying is probably one of the most useless types in raids. I don't think there's a lot of Pokemon weak to flying. The only time you'd ever use flying would be against a Verizian because it's double weak to flying, but let's still go through. In terms of megas you can use for flying, I think the only one in game right now is a Mega Pidgeot or a Mega Charizard Y, but Mega Pidgeot is better. In terms of non
Pokemon Megas you can use. Shadow Moltres is gonna be the number one. So that one you actually can use as a fire slash flying type raid attacker. You can kind of use it as both the Shadow Moltres. Shadow Honchkrow, Shadow Staraptor, Shadow Ho-Oh with Hidden Power Flying. That's gonna be a hard one to get because your Ho-Oh needs to know Hidden Power Flying. Regular Moltres, Honchkrow, Rayquaza, Staraptor. I would stick to um, Moltres and Shadow Moltres as your go-to for flyings that are not Megas, but you do need Legacy Sky Attack on Moltres to run it. But Moltres is really all in all, probably one of the best flying type raid attackers. Honchkrow is good as well, but Moltres is probably better. And Rayquaza too works as well. If you're using Rayquaza as a dragon type raid attacker, you can also use Rayquaza as a flying type raid attacker if you don't have the resources to build your own team. All in all, flying's not the most useful type for raids, but that's the best Pokemon. Next up, let's go to Ghost. Now Ghost is a decent type for raids. Me, myself, I would prefer running a dark team when going up against Ghost and Psychic type Pokemon. Ghost and Dark pretty much do the same thing, except Dark's actually resisting the moves coming at it. But still, let's go through it. Ghost has, again, one of the best Megas in the game, which is going to be Mega Gengar. Mega Gengar is definitely a staple on a Ghost team. If you don't have a Mega Gengar, definitely one to get. And it's been out for a while, so I hope you guys have a Mega Gengar. In terms of non-Megas, you can run for a Ghost team. We're going to have Shadow Banette in the number one slot in terms of DPS, which is kind of funny. Then we're going to have a regular Gengar, Chandler, Shadow Miss Magnus, Hoopa Confined, then Hoopa Unbound, Haunter, Garatina Origin Form, and then Banette, and then Trevenant. You can see how low Garatina Origin Form is here on the ranking because we're classifying by DPS. Garatina Origin Form is a tanky mofo, but his DPS isn't the highest. So what makes Garatina Origin Form strong is because it has such high TDO, which is bulk, making it survive on the battlefield for longer, so able to dish out damage over a long period of time. But of course, today we're classifying by DPS, so we're not looking at that Pokemon. Best Pokemon I would probably recommend powering up for a um, Ghost Team would be a Mega Gengar. And then of course, five regular Gengars. Shadow Banette is kind of an unavailable and expensive expensive Pokemon to run, and the DPS changes between Gengar and Shadow Banette are not that big of a deal. You could also run Chandelure. Chandelure works pretty similar to a regular Gengar, so either a team of one Mega Gengar and five regular Gengars, or a team of a Mega Gengar and five Chandelures will work well. And if Chandelure ever gets Shadow Claw, it'll allow class all these Pokemon by a landslide. Let's go on to Grass. Grass is not the most useful type for raids. The only thing I could really see using Grass against would be uh, maybe Water, but again, Electric is going to be better against Water type Pokemon, and Ice is probably going to be, be better against Grass type Pokemon. So all in all, Grass is not a very good type to have for raids. In terms of Megas, Mega Venusaur is going to be your go-to for Grass types. If you guys don't have a Mega Venusaur, currently in-game the best Mega. In terms of regular counters go, we have Shadow Venusaur, followed by Shadow Tangrowth, followed by Shadow Torterra, followed by Shadow Victory Bell, followed by Shadow Executor, followed by Shadow Shiftry, followed by Zarud, followed by Shadow Porygon Z with Hidden Power Grass. You can avoid that one. That one's a hard one to get. Followed by Roserade, followed by Shadow Tangela, and followed by Sceptile. In terms of a Grass type team, I would go for a Mega Venusaur, and then first of all, a Zarud. Zarude. Zarude's a very strong grass type attacker. Fill that the rest in with Rose Raids. Now you might be curious why I'm not recommending any of these shadows I recommended first. And that's just because these Pokemon are kind of unavailable to get and have very niche play. And all these shadows, although they're expensive and they are doing higher DPS, the investment you're putting into them, I don't think is as worth it since grass is not a very strong type. So it's a lot easier to go with a Mega Venusaur and then just more available Pokemon like Zarude, which you can just put rare candy into and full team of Rose Raids, which had a community day. Of course, if you're looking for the highest DPS DPS, Mega Venusaur and five Shadow Venusaur source is going to be your best bet, but that's a hard team to get. Let's move on to the ground type. A ground is a actually decent type for raids. You can use it. It's going to be the only type that's going to be able to hit electric type legendaries like Raikou, but not the most useful type. In terms of strongest in the game right now, the only ground type mega we do have is Mega Steelix. It doesn't output a lot of ground type damage, but it is a very tanky mega and will give you ground, your ground types mega boost for a while. In terms of non-megas we can run right now, the highest DPS is going to be Shadow Mamoswine, followed by Landers in the Therian form, followed by Extra Drill, followed by Garchomp with his community day, Earth Power, followed by Landers in the Incarnate form, followed by Groudon, followed by Shadow Flygon, followed by Rhyperior, followed by Shadow Swamp. In terms of a best ground type team you can run right now is going to be a Mega Steelix, followed by five Shadow Mammoth Swines if you're looking for DPS, but Landers in the Therian form, Extra Drill, and Garchomp all work pretty similarly in terms of damage in a raid, and Groudon works as well. Groudon's going to be a tankier Pokemon for raids, going to output damage a little slower, but still going to be a pretty strong counter. However, before you power up a full team of five Garchomps, I want to note that I think Shadow Gibble is the next Shadow Pseudo Legendary we are getting. So if we ever do get Shadow Garchomp, that Pokemon will outclass every single Pokemon I just mentioned. As you can see here on the chart, it actually outclasses Primal Groudon in terms of DPS. These are the stats for um, Shadow Garchomp. Anyone curious? It's going to be the strongest. So once Shadow Garchomp comes out and Mega Garchomp comes out, you're going to want a team of one Mega Garchomp and five Shadow Garchomps, and you're going to be doing some insane ground type damage. Let's go on to the next type, which is going to be the Ice type. Ice is a pretty good type for raids because there's a decent amount of Pokemon that are actually double weak to Ice, Land, and Rayquaza, for instance. Although it doesn't have the highest DPS, it is still a pretty strong type. In terms of the best Megas in the game right now, the only Mega we have is Mega Abomasnow. So if you don't have a Mega Abomasnow, make sure to get it. It's not the best Ice-type Ray attacker in the game, 
but it is the only ice type mega we can we do have. Then in terms of regular counters, we have Shadow Mamoswine in the number one slot, followed by Shadow Weavile. Shadow Mamoswine is gonna be your go-to for ice type ray attackers, followed by Galarian Darmanitan, followed by regular Mamoswine, followed by Weavile, and followed by Glaceon. Those are gonna be the only ice type ray attackers I recommend powering up. In terms of the best team you can have, it's gonna be a Mega Bomba Snow and five Shadow Mamoswines if you can run that. Regular Mamoswine, Weavile, Glaceon, Shadow Weavile, all those still do pretty well, and Galarian Darmanitan as well. And then in the future, once Galarian Darmanitan is able to film change into its Zen mode, Zen mode Galarian Darmanitan is going to be the best ice type ray attacker in the game, outclassing everything I just mentioned. So make sure to stock up your Darumaka candy for when Galarian Darmantan does drop. Next up, we have Normal type. Now, Normal, we don't even have to talk about because Normal can't do super effective damage in raid. And what you're looking for in a raid attacker is going to be super effective damage. But let's talk about Poison. Now, Poison is not a very good type in raids. I don't think there's really anything weak to Poison, I guess, Fairy type. But if we're talking about the best Poison type raid attackers in the game, Mega Beedrill is going to take the number one slot in terms of Megas. And then followed by Shadow Victory Bell, Shadow Valley Plume, Rosa Rage, Shadow Skunk Tank, Shadow Weeping Bell, Shadow Muck, and Toxicro. If we're looking for a best team, I would just recommend having a Mega Beedrill and then five Rose Raids because Rose Raid you can use as a Grass type Ray Attacker and a Poison type Ray Attacker. So you can kind of use as a double whammy there and no need to invest new resources into building a separate Poison type team. Let's move on to Psychic. Now Psychic has the strongest Pokemon in the game, which is Mewtwo, but Psychic is not the most useful type for raids. The only thing you're really hitting if you have a Psychic type team is, I guess, Poisons, um, Fighting types, I guess, but there's not a lot of Legendaries that are those types. But if we are looking for the best Pokemon in raids that are Psychic type, in terms of Megas, I believe Mega Slowbro is the only Mega right now. It's not a very good Psychic type Ray Attacker, but it is the only one giving Mega Boost in raids. If you've been curious what I've been saying about Mega Boost, Mega Boost gives a Pokemon that is the same type as the Mega, a damage multiplier of 1.2 times. So when you have a Mega Pokemon active in the field, all the Pokemon in the field that are the same type as that Mega are going to be doing 1.2 times damage. But in terms of normal counters, of course, Shadow Mewtwo is going to be the number one. It has, it's the strongest Ray Attacker in the game right now. Confusion Strike Strike on that Pokemon, absolutely insane, but it's not available right now unless you already have one. Then we have Shadow Alakazam, and then we have Regular Mewtwo. I'm going to stop it there. Regular Mewtwo or Shadow Mewtwo are going to be your only two Pokemon you really want on your Psychic type team. One Mega Slowbro, five Shadow Mewtwo's. I don't think you can have five Shadow Mewtwo's, but like whatever, a mix of Shadow Mewtwo's and Regular Mewtwo's is going to be your best bet for a Psychic type team. We're getting down to the end of it. Let's talk about the Rock type. Now, Rock type is probably the best type for raids. I'm going to recommend it right now. Rock hits so many legendaries for super effective damage and some even double super effective damage. In terms of the best Rock type array attackers in the game right now, in terms of Megas, Mega Aerodactyl, which is coming out very shortly, depending on when this video drops, it might already be out, is going to be the Mega you want for Rock type ray attackers. It actually is better than Mega Tyranitar, which again is not out yet in terms of damage per second, but outclassed by Mega Deancey, which is not out yet. In terms of non-Megas, we're looking at Rampardos as the number one DPS in the game. This again goes back to an example of how some Pokemon have super high DPS like Rampardos, but they are really frail. So Pokemon like Rampardos is doing a lot of damage per second, but it's going to die very fast, which means you might have to re-lobby with that team and use more potions in the end of the raid. But it doesn't make Rampardos a bad raid attacker. It makes it a very strong raid attacker. You just have to watch out and might have to dodge a couple times. After Rampardos, we have Shadow Tyranitar, then Shadow Aerodactyl, then Rhyperior with Rock Wrecker, Shadow Omastar, Terrakion, Regular Tyranitar, Aerodactyl, and Gigalith. In terms of best rock type team, I would go with one Mega Aerodactyl and five Rampardoses if you're looking for damage per second. Shadow Tyranitar works as well, but you do need Legacy Smackdown on that Pokemon. And Rhyperior is a very strong ray rock type ray attacker as well. It does need Legacy Rock Wrecker on that Pokemon, but it is a very tanky rock type ray attacker and still has a pretty high DPS. So all in all, Rhyperior is a generally good rock type ray attacker. Moving on to the second last type, which is going to be Steel. Steel is a pretty good type for raids. It can hit some fairy types and ice types for super effective damage. All in all, having a Steel team is definitely good. And it's actually a pretty simple team to have because there's only one Pokemon you really want. In terms of Megas for Steel type, the only Mega we have right now is Mega Steelix. So if you do want Mega Boost on your Steel types, you can go with a Mega Steelix. It really inputs no Steel type damage. So it's not a very good in terms of damage, but it is giving Mega Boost. In terms of Steel type Ray Attackers, your two you're going to want to go for is going to be Shadow Metagross and Regular Metagross. Both of them are going to need the Legacy Move Meteor Mash on that Pokemon, but that's going to be your go-to for Steel type Ray Attackers. Shadow Metagross is one of the best Ray Attackers in the game right now. Honorable mentions though, will go to the Shadow Caesar, Dialga, and Excadrill in terms of Steel type Ray Attackers. Not as good as the Metagrosses. You want to stick with the Metagrosses. They just completely outclass those Pokemon, but still something to note if that's all you really have and you already have a Dialga powered up, you might, you can use as a Steel type Ray Attacker for the time being. Steel is a very good team. Just stick with the Metagrosses. And the last type is going to be the Water type. Now again, Water I don't think is the most useful type for raids. You can hit Rock and Ground type for super effective, but again, Rock, you'd rather be using a Fighting type team or a Steel type team. And then Ground, you'd rather be using like an Ice type team. So all in all, Water is the most useful type, but let's go through it. In terms of Megas, best Mega in the game right now is going to be Mega Blastoise, then Mega Gyarados. Mega Blastoise is a very strong raid attacker, so definitely one to have on your team if you don't have one already. Then in terms of non-Megas, in terms of DPS, we have Shadow Swamper in the number one, followed by Shadow Sharpedo, followed by Shadow Gyarados, followed by Kingler, followed by Kyogre, followed by Clawitzer, followed by Crawdon, followed by Regular Swampert, followed by Shadow Blastoise.
Blastoise, followed by Samurott, et cetera, et cetera. The best team I'd recommend would be one Mega Blastoise and five Shadow Swampers if you can run that. But Pokemon like Kingler work as well. Kingler has a really high DPS, but it is a pretty frail Pokemon. And then as well as Kyogre works very well. Again, Kyogre is similar to Groudon. It has a very high TDO. It's a very tanky Pokemon, but it doesn't have the highest DPS. So it's still a pretty good raid attacker. It can output some very significant damage. But if you're looking in terms of DPS, Shadow Swampert and those other Pokemon I mentioned are going to be better. That's it for all the types, guys. Okay, let's get into PvP. I'm going to link below this website, but we're going to be using PV Poke today. If you don't know this website, I don't know if you've been living on a rock, but this is the best place to go to find out what are the best Pokemon to power up for PvP. You're going to click on the ranking section, and then in here you can choose each single league. So Great League, Ultra League, Master League, Master League Classic, Ultra League Remix, Holiday Cup, Sino Cup, any single cup that's ever come to Pokemon Go, you can organize in here. We're going to stick with the Great League. In here, it'll show you the rankings of all the best Pokemon that you should be powering up for the Great League. Now, for example, here we can see Galarian Sunfist is going to be ranked number one, which means it's a very strong pick. If you do click the drop down, you can see certain things like what Pokemon this Pokemon beats, what Pokemon this Pokemon loses to, and then like its rankings for each of the positions. So what, how good is that as a lead, closer, and switch? If you don't know a lead is the first Pokemon you throw out, a switch is a Pokemon you switch into if you have a bad lead, and a closer is the last Pokemon you use once shields are down to sweep up the game. It'll show you what the rank one IVs are, low attack, high defense, high stamina. If you don't want, know you want low attack, high defense, high stamina for PVP IVs, you're curious why I'll link below a video, but it pretty much makes your Pokemon bulkier. So all these Pokemon I'm recommending here, you should generally be powering up low attack, high defense, high stamina, unless you're talking about the Master League and other information like move sets and things like that. Now, I just want to say, don't take this list for complete science. Now, although you can trust probably like the top like 10 Pokemon being generally good, don't go ahead down here and then like look at a Pokemon like Primeape, for example, and expect it to perform perfectly in the Great League or a Loma Mola. The rankings are a general outline to show you how good a Pokemon performs. And some of these Pokemon will perform better on these spreadsheets than they actually do in real life. For example, Primate, it's a very frail Pokemon. And although can pick up some wins, it doesn't perform the most amazing. What I recommend doing if you're looking for the best Pokemon or you want a more reliable list is going to be come to the train section and click on top performers. In here, of course, you can change the league like we did before. But in here, it'll show you the top performers for so the top performing Pokemon for each league. This is a more safe place to find out what are the best Pokemon currently performing in the Great League or whatever league. For example, all these Pokemon in here, I would definitely recommend using and all of them do perform pretty well in the Great League. Final thing people might be asking is what are going to be the best teams for each league? Of course, you can change the league here, but then once you scroll down from top performers, you can see the top team section. This will show you some generally good teams to run. So if you're curious on any teams to run, what Pokemon to power up? So for example, you're like, you need, I need a new Great League team. You can come in here and you can find a Great League team. Now I want to note there is a team rating and usage filter. All of this data is tested by bots in the PvP poke simulator so a bunch of bots throw up all these teams and find out which teams are performing the best team rating will show you how good a team is the higher it is from 500 the stronger that team is and then there's usage usage will show you how much that team has actually been used and tested by the bots you have to wait till certain teams are used more if you're curious but some teams haven't been used that much but still have a higher rating in general a team that is generally near 500 and has a decent amount of usage is going to be a decent team to run for example Venusaur Sableye and Galarian Stunfisk a pretty strong team so if you're curious on what Pokemon to power up and you want a good team for the Great League, then, you know, checking out the top teams and then powering up with Venusaur, Sableye, and Igalarian Sunfisk is great and even shows you the movesets you're going to want on these Pokemon. So yeah, all in all, that's how you check out the Pokemon for PvP. Check out the top performers and check out the top teams and you can even take a look at the rankings, but don't swear your life to the rankings because certain Pokemon in the rankings still perform well. Like for example, Alolan Marowak, rank 153, but it's still a very strong pick in the Great League. With that being said, that's pretty much the video, guys. I hope this video answers some of your questions and showed you guys how to do this research for yourself. Now I'm going to finish by linking off to a couple of videos if anyone wants more information. First of all, I'm going to link to a video for the best types for raids. If you want a little more information on what are the best types to power up for raids, specifically like should you have a rock type team before you have an electric type team, etc, etc. I'll link below a video explaining all that so you can check out what are the best types. I also am going to be making a video on how to use the DPS times TDO spreadsheet because a lot of people are confused how to use the spreadsheet and look up all this data for yourself. So I'll be making a full guide on how to do this and this guide will even include how to predict future Pokemon kind of like we did with Shadow Garchomp and look at certain Pokemon that could be coming to Pokemon Go, are they going to outclass the current ones we have? So should you be saving your resources to power up those Pokemon once they drop? Finally, since our ranking did go by DPS today, I'm going to link a video on how to dodge in raids. Pokemon with higher DPS take full advantage of dodging because although they do more DPS, they're usually frailer. So being able to dodge and take less damage will help them in the long run since they will end up doing more damage and it'll be harder to faint them since you're dodging. Check that video as well, link below if you want to learn about how to dodge. If you have any questions about what to power up and should you power up this over this, feel free to comment them in the comment section below. And if you are very knowledgeable on this subject, feel free to answer some of the comments in the comment section below, guys. Hope you guys have an amazing rest of the day. We're going to see you all in the next one, guys. Fall from tips of one. Peace.